Next step in the process is to figure out where we want to mount the rectifier and the capacitor in this box. Uh, as it turns out, I don't really want to put this inside of the box. The rectifier that I bought has heat, um, heat sink fins on the outside of it. So I want that to get good airflow. I don't want it trapped inside the box where it not only won't be able to vent by itself, but it'll be subject to the heat made by the transformer itself. This, we're going to just drill some holes in the side of the panel that'll take the four contacts. We're going to screw it on there, and this is just going to hang out on the outside of the box. Yeah, it's going to be a little ugly and clunky looking, but for a free Harbor Freight welder, I don't really care that much. The capacitor, we are going to put inside the box. There's plenty of room here in the front, and I'll get you a close-up shot of this, but we can put this right on the bottom of the box, right in the front. That'll keep all of our runs nice and short from the transformer to the rectifier, across the capacitor and out the torch. So let me change the camera angle and we'll get to work laying out for the holes for the rectifier. Well, YouTube, we have what is affectionately known as an oops. And I could have edited this out, but I figured what the heck, I'll show it to you. When you are laying out the holes or slots or whatever you're gonna do for your rectifier, Make sure you don't have the side of the welder upside down when you lay it out. Um, so we're friends here. We're just going to pretend like <clears throat> these two slots don't exist. Never happened. And we're actually going to work down here at the bottom. Not altogether bad that this happened because I've changed my mind anyway as to how I want to do this. I had originally cut these slots for the whole thing and it isn't really necessary. We just need a hole for the terminals of the rectifier. So what I decided I would do, you don't have to do this with calipers, this is certainly not rocket science, but it's just an easy way to, to lay it out. I grabbed the measurement, what I'm gonna call the middle of these two terminals, and I laid that out as two dots here on this side, did the same thing on this side, and likewise made sure that I had them the right distance apart going this direction. So however you want to do it, tape measure works, a string works, tape, whatever, uh, get yourself four holes on here for the four contacts. And at this point, it just becomes a matter of how you want to cut that out, what tools you have. I'm just going to drill it. I've got a step drill that I'm going to use to uh, make that hole big after I use a regular twist bit to get it started. And uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill those holes and we'll come back and we will look at having this rectifier mounted on the side of the welder. So after the big oops, we finally got the bridge rectifier mounted on here. Just a couple of holes drilled, four in the back for the terminals and then two more for the mounting hardware. Obviously, what you're going to need to do is going to depend on the configuration of your rectifier. Um, one of the other things that I did let me get in here real close here. I put some heat shrink tubing around these contacts, shoved it all the way down to the body of the thing, because even though these holes are pretty big, the contacts still come relatively close to the metal frame on the welder. And I didn't want to have any short circuit type surprises, so I went ahead and, and put that tubing on there. We're left with holes in the ends of these terminals to which we're gonna be able to attach some ring terminals using screws. That looks a little bit funny sticking on the outside of the welder. It's not too bad though, once you get it mounted on here, uh, I still think it's better to have it on the outside for airflow than to shove it in there somewhere. There is room to put it inside the top here. We could have done that and then just opened the lid when we want to weld. I don't like the idea of getting spatter in the drive roll mechanism, so I'm, I'm sticking with this as my decision, but it's your welder, your mileage may vary, do what you want. Next part of adding components to the welder is the capacitor. We gotta find some place inside this box to put this bad boy, and that's gonna turn out to be relatively easy. There's a lot of empty space up here in the front between the transformer and underneath the drive controls for the wire feed. So this thing is gonna stand just inside the box along the front. I'll move the camera in to show you where this is gonna go. And frankly, I think we're gonna go old school simple on mounting it. I'm gonna drill a couple holes in the front and wire tie it in place. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. There's plenty of room inside the box for that capacitor. It's just gonna stand up, 
going to leave us plenty of room for access to the terminal screws on the top. You actually get a better look at it from the other side. There, see, now from the other side of the welder, you can see this is now the 110 volt power cord coming in here, but there's plenty of room between there and the circuit control board for the wire feed speed. We can get a couple of ring terminals stacked up on the screws here. So I think this is where we're gonna make our multiple connections, the feed coming in from the rectifier and then the wire going out to the torch. We'll connect them both here because there'll be plenty of room on those screws. Uh, this does need to be fastened. I could probably just epoxy it to the bottom of the welder, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole here and one on the other side, and I'm just gonna wire tie this thing right to the front. I still have visions of getting another capacitor or a bigger capacitor, so I don't wanna do anything too permanent right now and uh, this doesn't get banged around, certainly not while it's in use. So a wire tie is gonna help just work just fine.